Drake is not only a huge rap sensation with countless hits and memeable moments, but he's also grown to become an icon of our generation. With his three mixtapes, Drake had reached success as an unsigned artist without a record deal. His independent songs not only reached the 106 and Park Countdown, but also the Billboard charts. And he even went on tour with Lil Wayne before he even signed a contract. It's interesting that the rapper got his start on the TV show Degrassi The Next Generation, because it's clear that Drake truly is the voice of this generation. Maybe that's why he's considered the most memeable rapper ever, which we will definitely cover in our lightning round. Actor, rapper, and even sometimes comedian, there is nothing that Drake won't try. And so far, he's succeeded at pretty much all of them. <laughs> so get ready, because Mike Drop is counting down the 107 music facts about Drake. Let's get this started. Number one, Aubrey Drake Graham, known famously just as Drake, was born in Toronto, Canada on October 24th, 1986. Number two, Drake comes from a musical family. His father, Dennis Graham, was a musician for most of his life and was from Memphis, Tennessee. He was most known as the drummer for mega rock star Jerry Lee Lewis. Drake's legendary uncle, Larry Graham, was a bass player for Sly and the Family Stone and Prince. Number three, Drake's other uncle, Mabin Teeny Hodges, is also Memphis music royalty. He was the guitarist for Al Green and also helped launch careers of many soul and R&B singers back then. Number four, Drake had a diverse upbringing with his mother being Caucasian Jewish and his father being African American Catholic. However, Jersey said that he considers himself black because he's more immersed with black culture than any other. Number five, when Drake was just five years old, his parents divorced and he ended up living with his mom in a primarily Jewish upper class neighborhood in Forest Hill, Toronto. Number six, his mother raised him as Jewish, throwing him a bar mitzvah when he turned 13 and celebrating the Jewish high holy days together. Number seven, Drake really loves his mom, Sandy Graham, who is a retired educator. His 2015 mixtape song titled, You and the Six, is dedicated to her. Number eight, in his younger days, the rap megastar witnessed his father being arrested right in front of him. He states that the many experiences he went through at a young age forced him to grow up quicker than most people. Number nine, the first rap album Drake ever listened to was Snoop Dogg's Doggy Style. He listened to it with his father in the car, but they only listened to it for about 20 minutes, and then they spent an hour listening to songs Drake himself had recorded. Number 10, one of Drake's classmates' father was an agent, and apparently he had told his son that if anyone in his class made him laugh, to refer to him for an audition. Drake did well in his audition, and so his classmate's father became his agent. Number 11, in 2001, Drake dropped out of high school to be the breadwinner of the family by joining the cast of the Canadian hit TV show Degrassi, The Next Generation. At this time, his mom had become very ill and they were broke. Number 12. His character in Degrassi was called Wheelchair Jimmy because he was a rising basketball star until a classmate paralyzed him by shooting him in the back. Drake starred in the show for seven years. Number 13. Degrassi The Next Generation was wildly popular in Canada and the show won an award for Best Ensemble in a TV series in 2002. Drake became a huge star in Canada while his name was unknown in the US. Number 14. Degrassi The Next Generation was popular in Canada and the show won a Young Artist Award for Best Ensemble in a TV Series in 2002. Drake was later nominated for the Young Artist Best Supporting Actor Award in 2005. And though he didn't win, Drizzy went on to become a huge star in Canada. Number 15. While he was still working on Degrassi, Drake began working on his first mixtape. He released his first one called Room for Improvement in 2006 and sold 6,000 copies. Number 16, Drake's second mixtape called Comeback Season was released in 2007. One of the featured tracks on the tape, Replacement Girl, became Drake's first hit single after the music video earned a spot on BET's hip hop themed show, 106 and Park. It was featured on a segment called New Joint of the Day, making him the first unsigned Canadian rapper to have a song and video featured on BET. Number 17, Replacement Girl debuted at number 21 on Billboard's Hot R&B Hip Hop Singles, an impressive achievement for being only two mixtapes in his rap career. Go Drizzy! Number 18. In 2008, Drake's character was eliminated from the show Degrassi. Without a steady source of income, Drake was about to go in search of random day jobs. Number 19. Luckily, Jaws Prince, a producer at rap lot Records, was running the company for his father at the time, found Drake's music on MySpace, and sent it to Lil Wayne. Number 20. Drake then received an unexpected call from Lil Wayne, who asked Drake to board a flight to Houston that night to join his tour. Since then, Drake has been quickly climbing the music industry ladder. Number 21. Touring with Lil Wayne gave Drake exposure to new audiences and paved the way for his next mixtape. By this time, his name was circulating in the music industry and he gained support from hip hop powerhouses like Jay-Z and Kanye West. Number 22. After touring and recording with Lil Wayne, Drake released his third mixtape, So Far Gone in 2009. It was executive produced by Noah Shabib, known as 40, who Drake had worked with from the start of his music career. Number 23. Many say 40 was instrumental in the rapper's success and sound. The two met when 40 produced Degrassi's miniseries, Degrassi Unscripted. Number 24. Similar to Drake, 40 used to be a child actor. He was on an episode of the popular 90s book turned TV series, Goosebumps, but his most memorable role was being one of the male leads in The Virgin Suicides. 
Number 25. 40 was initially just Drake's engineer, but Drizzy was frustrated when he couldn't find producers who had that Toronto sound he wanted in his music. So 40, who already knew the ins and outs of producing, stepped in to become Drake's producer. Number 26. And a good thing he did. So Far Gone featured the catchy single Best I Ever Had, which peaked at number 2 on Billboard's Hot 100 Singles Chart. The music video for the song was directed by rap star Kanye West. Number 27. After Best I Ever Had took off on the charts, Drake signed with Universal Motown in the summer of 2009, which handled distribution, and all also to Aspire, Young Money, Cash Money Records, which was under the Universal umbrella. It was his first ever record deal. Number 28. In this amazing deal, Drake got a $2 million advance, publishing rights to his songs, and only paid a 25% distribution fee for sales revenues to the label. Oftentimes, record labels own about 25% of an artist's publishing rights and get huge cuts of related work, like tour merchandise profit. Major fist bump to Drake and his team for avoiding the industry standards. Number 29. Drake's management team consists of the company heads of hip hop since 1978, who also managed Kanye West and Cortez Bryant, who was the longtime manager of Lil Wayne. Number 30. The first time Wheezy invited Drake to the studio, Drizzy insisted that his longtime pal 40 be there as well. He knew that he needed his close friend and producer to become a big name under the Cash Money label. Number 31. Under Universal Motown Records, Drake then produced an EP that was a compilation of songs from So Far Gone. It became number 6 on the Billboard 200 chart and earned him a 2010 Juno Award for Rap Recording of the Year. Number 32. In 2011, the rapper then released the full-length album Thank Me Later under the Cash Money label. The record featured many popular artists like Kings of Leon, The Dream, Lil Wayne, Jay-Z, and Kanye West. Number 33. Thank Me Later climbed to the top of the Billboard 200 chart, landing at number 1 and went to become certified platinum. Number 34. Listeners and critics were surprised at the success since Drake had a more mellow style of wordplay than other rappers at the time. But many say that's what set him apart. One Rolling Stone reviewer said, he's subtle and rueful rather than loud and lively, emotionally transparent rather than thuggy. Well, whatever he is, we like he. Number 35. Despite the success of Thank Me Later, the rapper was concerned that it was not the best debut he could have made in the music world, and that it was too rushed. So he decided to name his next album, Take Care, to emphasize how much more time and effort he poured into the second an album. Number 36. Take Care was released in 2011 and it was clear that Drake's efforts paid off. The album won a Grammy, earned the number one spot on the Billboard 200 in the US and in Canada, and it was highly praised by critics everywhere. Number 37. Take Care spit out four hit singles, the song Headlines, Make Me Proud, The Motto, and Take Care. Number 38. The album helped Drake beat P. Diddy's record for the most number one rap songs on the Billboard chart, with Diddy scoring 10 and Drake scoring 12. Number 39. Drizzy's third studio album, Nothing Was the Same, dropped in 2013 and brought with it multiple hit songs like the anthem Start Up From The Bottom and the softer single Hold On We're Going Home. Many people viewed the album as one where Drake seemed more confident in his music abilities. Drizzy once again worked with his pal 40 to produce it. Number 40. The song Start Up From The Bottom is about the obstacles Drake has overcome to achieve success. He said, I just wanted to make it known that I did work really hard to get here and it wasn't just a fluke and it wasn't easy by any means. We're glad you stuck with it, Drizzy. Number 41. Before Nothing Was The Same was released, Drizzy worked on some songs that did not make the album, but instead were released online. Two of them were called 5AM in Toronto and Girls Love Beyonce. Number 42. The cover for Nothing Was The Same, which features an oil painting of Drake looking at himself as a child, was designed by Kadir Nelson, who is famous for designing the cover art for Michael Jackson's album Michael. Number 43. Between Drake's first two albums, there were eight guest appearances, but on Nothing Was The Same, there were only two, a sure sign that the rapper was more self-assured than when he first started in the music game. Number 44. Drake set off a promotional tour for Nothing Was The Same in 2013, with some time off for side projects with other artists, and in addition, created a Grammy-nominated single titled Zero to 100, The Catch-Up. Number 45. Nothing Was The Same was nominated for Best Rap Album at the Grammys that year and was also considered for the Polaris Music Prize, a Canadian award. Number 46. On December 2013, Drake gifted his fans with a free download of his song, Trophies, a track that didn't make it to Nothing Was The Same. The feel-good anthem was meant to help fans start the new year off right. Number 47. Drizzy wanted to release his next mixtape, If You're Reading This Too Late, for free download, but eventually the Cash Money label decided to sell it. Number 48. His next album, If You're Reading This It's Too Late, was released in 2015 and impressively, all of its 17 songs found their way into the hot R&B hip-hop song charts, as well as had a number one debut. Guess Drizzy was not too late. Number 49. Later that year, Drake collaborated with fellow rap star Future to release the mixtape What A Time To Be Alive. When the mixtape dropped, the featured single Jumpman shot straight to number one on the charts. Number 50. Taylor Swift was recently featured rapping to Jumpman in the famous Apple Music commercial, which shows her hilariously face-planting into a treadmill after attempting to rap 
app along with Drizzy while running. Drake reaped the benefits of this popular ad when sales of Jumpman soared to 431% on iTunes after the commercial aired. Number 51. Drake also tweeted that he plans to make his newest album, Views from the Six, available only on Apple Music. This is a current trend in the music industry that other artists like Kanye West and Taylor Swift have followed in order to keep free streaming services like Spotify from preventing huge drop in artist royalties. Lightning round time, people! So, according to BuzzFeed, Drake may be the most memeable rapper ever. Have you been following the hilarious Drake memes? We got some for you guys right here. Check it out. Number 52. At what looks to be a Shakespeare section of a bookstore, someone stuck some letters and a Drake picture over the main poster to make it Mr. William Drakespeare. I mean, Drake is technically a poet, so it makes sense. Number 53. Because Drake is known for being emotional and looking so sad and conflicted, this E.T. meme is absolutely perfect. Just hold on, we're going home. Don't worry, Trizzy, we got you. Number 54. Taken from his hit anthem song, Started From The Bottom, this next meme alters the meaning to imply that Drake is talking about human evolution. Started from the bottom, now we're here. Number 55. Coming from an acting background, it's no surprise that Drake has so many great facial expressions, which is how this next hilarious meme came about. When the dishwater is nasty, but you gotta put your hand in it to let the water out. Gross. Yeah, we hate that too. Number 56. We love that big drizzy smile, which is why we love this next meme. Laughing at your own text before you send it. Number 57. This next meme shows an old professional photo of a young clean cut Drake right up next to a later picture of him parting. Looks like the college kids use this as a metaphor for the heavy party scene that many college students get caught up in and created this meme, freshman year versus junior year. <laughs> Number 58. When Drake joined Madonna on stage at Coachella in 2015, Madge made out with Trizzy and he surprisingly made a disgusted face after. Of course the result was a volcanic eruption of memes including the face you make after your grandma kisses you. Number 59. One of the most famous Drake memes is the one of him at a Toronto Raptors game busting out a lint roller to clean himself. Hey, gotta stay fresh. Number 60. And of course, last but definitely not least, the explosion of hotline bling memes that came out after the music video was released. When you hotline bling but it's just your service provider telling you you're almost out of data. Number 61. When the wrong person makes your hotline bling. Number 62. When you take your food out of the microwave and it burns your hand. So true. Number 63. Not to mention the billion of hotline dancing gifts. Drake playing tennis, Drake doing the Carlton, Drake being a Jedi, and the list goes on and on and on, like forever. All right guys, that's it for the lightning round. Which memes did we miss? Which ones are your favorites? Leave a comment below because we love that and keep on blinging. Number 64. A hot music duo now, Drizzy first collaborated with Rihanna on her single, What's My Name in 2010. The track debuted at number one on Billboard Hot 100. Number 65. Rihanna told Billboard magazine that she wanted Drake because he's the hottest rapper out right now and we've always been trying to work together. He's the only person I thought could really understand the melody of the song. And the minute he heard it, he said, I know exactly what I'm gonna do. I love it. Number 66. Before recording What's My Name, Riri and Drizzy had a brief fling and were allegedly seen getting intimate at a bowling alley. Rihanna denied that anything was going on, but then Drake rapped about their relationship on his track Fireworks. That might explain why they always have strong chemistry when they appear in a music video or on stage together, including in their 2011 Grammy performance together. Number 67. In 2011, Drake was featured on Rick Ross's track Made Man and gave a shout out to Rihanna in the song. He raps, one of my baddest women ever. I call her Rihanna, but that's because her name is Rihanna. Not the most subtle, but you can tell he's probably fallen pretty hard for her. Number 68. Later that same year, Rhi and Drake switched roles, and this time it was Rihanna who sang the hook on the rapper single Take Care. When the music video was released, rumors once again started that the two were a couple. Not hard to see why. This video shows the two intimately embracing. Number 69. Drake told XXL magazine that Take Care was about a girl who really cared about him back in the day and how he felt guilty that he couldn't reciprocate those feelings. Number 70. Another woman Drake has been linked to in the past is rapper Nicki Minaj. It all started when Drake rapped in his debut album Thank Me Later that he would love to marry Nicki. Drizzy once mentioned in a Daily Beast interview that Nicki was the ideal woman for him. Number 71. Drake later admitted to MTV News that he had a crush on Nicki Minaj saying it was unfortunate that she only thought of him as a brother because he really loved her. He also said that she was the inspiration for his song Unthinkable. Number 72. Twitter went into a frenzy the summer of 2010 when Drake tweeted that Nicki Minaj was his wife. Nicki responded saying it was true, but fans soon found out that they were just Twitter married. Whatever.
whatever that means. Number 73. When Drake dropped his Nothing Was The Same album, there seemed to be some drama between him and Nicki Minaj, and the track Tuscan Leather. Drake mentions that he wasn't talking to Nicki or anyone from their Cash Money label. Nicki later revealed it was because she was upset that Drake didn't ask her or anyone else from Cash Money to contribute to his album. Luckily, Drake later stated that the two had reconciled and they were okay now. Number 74. After lots of speculation, the rumors that Nicki Minaj and Drake were dating were squashed when Nicki confirmed she was dating rapper Meek Mill. Unfortunately, there's some beef between Meek and Drizzy since Meek Mill accused Drake of not writing his own raps. Number 75. Drake's producer pal 40 went on Twitter to defend Drizzy against Meek Mill's allegations. Sadly, he's the only person from Drake's camp who spoke publicly about the issue, but at least 40 said it well, ending his rant with, if someone wants to be upset that Drake made a great album, go for it. Get mad all day, lol. But don't ever question my brother's pen. Now, that's a real friend right there. Number 76. When Drake was just getting started in entertainment, he set the goal of making 25 million by the time he was 25. And he did. Way to go, Drizzy. His next goal was to reach 250 million by 29. Some say that's ambitious, but we say, that's Drake. Number 77. The most influential artist to Drake's music was the late R&B superstar Aaliyah. Drake loves her so much, he has an earpiece with Aaliyah's face on it, a tattoo of her on his back, references her and her lyrics in his songs, wrote a letter to her on the anniversary of her death, and until recently was set to executive produce an Aaliyah project. Now that's a fan. Number 78. Drake is a co-founder of the Canadian record label OVO Sound, which stands for October's Very Own. He found the company with his producer friend 40 and one of his managers, Oliver L. Katib. Number 79. Though Drake has been shouting out Oboe since his early mixtape days, the company didn't become official till 2012 and is currently being distributed by Warner Brothers Records. Drake, Majid Jordan, Party Next Door, and 1985 are all signed artists to Oboe Sound. Number 80. OVO Sound partnered with the City of Toronto to form a Toronto Music Advisory Committee. Years ago, the government allocated a $45 million Ontario Music Fund to build a campaign that will bring production, distribution, performance, and international promotion of music made in Ontario and neighboring Toronto. Now that is how you put your city on the map. Number 81. At the 2013 Oboe Fest, Kanye West complimented Drake by telling people that he and Jay-Z would not have made the Watch the Throne their best-selling hip-hop album if Drake wasn't putting pressure on us like that. So I just want to pay my respects. Drake was extremely flattered by his praise and said that it was the most important moment in his career. Number 82. That same year, Drake became the Toronto Raptors' official ambassador. This led to the famous lint rolling meme we mentioned earlier, as Drake sat courtside with his new title. Can't be a sloppy ambassador. Number 83. In 2014, Drake and Lil Wayne embarked on a special US tour that had them rap battling each other every night. The tour was a huge success, both commercially and critically, with great reviews across the board. And you can guess what the tour is called. Drake vs Lil Wayne. Number 84. Once in 2010, Drake had to cancel a free show with the band Hanson in Manhattan because not only was it overcrowded, but the crowds were also getting rowdy and it raised safety concerns. Number 85. In the documentary Drake Better Than Good Enough, Drake mentions that he doesn't like to write lyrics on paper and that he only ever writes them on his Blackberry. So much so that 40 and his people have extra Blackberries around them just in case Drake misplaces his phone and needs to write lyrics. Drake said he lost his Blackberry on his Say What's Real freestyle. Number 86. Drake told GQ magazine that Marvin Gaye's breakup album Here My Dear was a huge inspiration for his album Nothing Was The Same. He even recorded the album in Marvin Gaye's old studio, which is called Marvin's Room. Number 87. The title of Drake's newest album, Views From The Six, is a reference to the six boroughs of Toronto, which used to each be its own city decades ago, but is now all part of Toronto. Number 88. Some beef between Drake and Jay-Z began when Drizzy criticized Jay-Z's art raps in a Rolling Stone interview. Then when documents leaked in 2012 claiming that Drake was suing cash money for due royalties, Jay-Z threw a jab on his track, We Made It, by saying, no, I'm not missing no royalty statements. Drake then fired back with DJ Khaled's They Don't Love You No More. Number 89. Ironically, Drizzy also told Rolling Stone that his hit song, In Beat, in Paris by Jay-Z and Kanye West was what inspired him to write the single, Start It From The Bottom. Number 90. Drake penned the song Unthinkable for Alicia Keys and co-wrote the song Fall For Your Type for Jamie Foxx, which earned him multiple songwriting awards. Number 91. Drake did some voice acting in 2012 for the movie Ice Age 4 Continental Drift. He played Ethan, the young mammoth. Number 92. In 2014, Drake hosted the ESPY Awards and performed some comedy skits that had the audience reeling in laughter. He also performed two comedic songs called Side Pieces and Honorable Mention, which were considered by many to be actually good enough to be released as singles. Number 93. Drizzy's first appearance on Saturday Night Live was on January 19, 2015. Critics complimented his acting chops as well as his comedic timing. A poet and a comedian? Who knew? Uh, we did. 
Number 94. In Vibe magazine, Drake listed his top five favorite hip hop albums of all time, which are Jay Z's Black Album, Clips's Lord Willen, Little Brother and Mick Boogie's Mixtape, and Justice for All, Notorious B.I.G.'s Life After Death, and a toss up between Andre 3000's The Love Below and Outkast's Aquamini. He also named Lil Wayne's The Carter II and Snoop Dogg's Doggy Style as influential honorable mentions. Number 95. Back when Drake was unsigned in 2007, he had an obsession with residential pools and Googled the best one in the world. He put his favorite one, which happened to be in LA, as his desktop background. Years later, when he was worth 30 million and hunting for his first LA home, the same property went on sale, and Drake bought his dream home from its owner for 7.7 .7 million when it was originally up for 27 million. What a deal! The estate also has a game room, gym, and waterfalls. Uh, pool party anyone? Number 96. Drake's music video Hypher recreates his bar mitzvah that his mom threw for him when he was 13. He called the video Re Bar Mitzvah. Number 97. Drizzy donated 75,000 to help create a recording studio for Strawberry Mansion High School in Philadelphia. Coincidentally, Meek Mill, the rapper Drake is feuding with, is an alumni of this school. Number 98. In 2012, Drake bought a neon light art piece that says, Less Drake, More Tupac, for $6,000. It's now hanging in his house in Miami. And Drake said that it makes him feel like he's doing something right. Number 99. Drizzy admits that deciding when songs should be released is his least favorite part about creating music. But he knows that being strategic is essential to becoming the most celebrated rapper ever, which is obviously his main goal. Number 100. Another major influence on Drake is the lady MC herself, Queen Latifah. Her album, Black Rain, was the first cassette Drizzy ever purchased because he Love the song Unity. Number 101. Drake is a wine connoisseur, and his favorite kinds of wine are the ones he can pair with his fave Italian dishes. His number one bottle of choice? A rare brand called Tignanello, which sells for about $80 per bottle. Number 102. Drake was once robbed on a date in 2009, and ever since then, he's made sure to have security with him at all times. Talk about a bad date. Number 103. Drake's album Take Care features British musician and DJ Jamie XX from the XX and American beat poet Gil Scott Heron. Number 104. Drake's celebrity crush is Kat Dennings, and he even went to have sushi with her once, just as friends. Uh-huh, sure. They never hung out again because Dennings allegedly was overwhelmed by Drake's tight security guards and also was attacked by his fans on social media. She did praise the rapper, though, and said that he's a very sweet guy. Number 105. Drake and The Weeknd have a close personal and professional relationship and are both from Toronto. And though The Weeknd had gained an audience when he released music online before being signed, he gained an even wider audience when Drake put his House of Balloons mixtape on his oboe blog and fans responded quite well. Number 106. The songs Crew Love, Shot For Me, and The Ride from Drake's album Take Care was originally supposed to be on The Weeknd's mixtape, House of Balloons, until Drake wanted them. The Weeknd let Drake use those songs without hesitation because they saw it as a great opportunity, saying it was that Toronto sound that Drake liked and that it inspired his own music. Number 107. In honor of Kobe Bryant, aka Black Mamba's last game, Drake posted a photoshopped picture on Instagram of his Take Care album cover with Kobe's face and a gold mamba snake instead of the original Ovo Owl and wrote, thank you for everything. Hashtag Mamba Day. Nice tribute, Drizzy, and thank you for everything. Once again, guys, I'm Lauren Mayhew, and you just finished watching Mike Drop's 107 Music Facts About Drake. Did you guys enjoy these facts? Make sure to subscribe because we are bringing you more facts about your favorite musicians every single week. Let us know which artists we should find more facts about, and we will see you guys next time.